The lion is the true king of the land, but it too can be killed by hyenas. The eagle can be considered the king of the air, but at night it's absolutely defenseless against owls. And if we talk about the underwater world, it seems that orcas simply have no equal here. But this is not entirely true. Today, you'll learn why orcas need a whale's tongue, why they use other animals to play, how they storm the shores, and who has a chance to kill the king of the oceans after all. Let's go! I don't think I need to explain what orcas are. They're huge, black and white, predatory, just devilishly smart. No kidding. To understand how powerful orcas are as hunters, it's enough to say that they have a thoughtful plan for each hunt depending on what exactly is the future dinner. Orcas, and they almost always hunt in groups, choose a certain strategy. For example, they need to disorient a shark to eat it. For a school of small fish, something like a carousel of air bubbles will do, and when it comes to whales, it's better to see with your own eyes. The attack follows a brutal but working scheme. Orcas take turns ramming, biting, and pulling the whale by the pectoral fins, and as a rule, exhaust their prey. Even despite the size difference, one gets tired of such a thing. Imagine being bitten by several medium-sized dogs at the same time, and then they also try to drown you. Yes, orcas block the whale's breathing hole, and after a chase that can last for hours, the exhausted giant drowns. And then the final strike. Whales, of course, come in all sorts of ways, too. Some of them, especially the young ones, aren't much bigger than orcas themselves. But what about the blue whale? It's said to be the largest creature that has ever existed on our planet. It weighs over 190 tons. That's what we're going to eat, orcas must have thought, and they rammed it. Now think about it. Several orcas, which are actually just toothed dolphins, turn a blue whale to flight. Even a giant like that prefers not to mess with them. But the most common prey of killer whales are baby whales. It's so common that whales even protect the offspring of other species if they can. For example, humpbacks were once seen guarding a small gray whale, and it was already dead. They simply didn't allow the killer whale to finish what they started, probably because they know what happens with the prey, because orcas are such gourmands. Humpback whale calves are one of their favorite dishes, and orcas often eat only their tongues and leave the rest of the carcass for scavengers. Why? Well, apparently it's very tasty. By the way, the same thing happens with sharks. Orcas eat only their liver because it contains useful substances. In short, sharks are kind of like vitamins. And you know, here I am talking about how orcas prey on different types of marine animals. Can anyone stand up to them? Just so long as it doesn't come down to the sperm whale. Orcas hunt females and calves of this species, but try to stay away from the males. The heavy and powerful tail of the sperm whale has the potential to deliver fatal blows. The exact force of such blows is unknown, but an adult sperm whale weighs about 90 tons. That's about 10 times the size of a classic Routemaster double-decker bus. Orcas wouldn't stand a chance if the sperm whale were a little more aggressive and smarter. Most whales are huge, but they're not really very intelligent. Apparently, all that they have are their tails. What if that same sperm whale was as smart as a human? Hey you! Yep, on the other side of the screen. What would you do if you were a sperm whale suddenly attacked by an orca? Surely you'd turn around faster and hit it with the tail. Or maybe you could use your teeth. Each of them weighed 2.2 pounds. It'd be nice to start using them. Another predator that can fight orcas back is the great white shark. You know, the creepy one with the killer eye? Orcas are considered the only natural enemies of great white sharks, and if the shark manages to bite first, the rows of razor-sharp teeth can pierce even the thickest skin. I think it's the species that can win this fight if it attacks first. If not, a special hunting strategy will come into play, as I've already mentioned. The killer whale pushes the shark to the surface with its broad tail, then stuns it. Then the killer whale, as if having some knowledge of shark biology, flips the prey, disorients it, and paralyzes it. Bon appetit! So who can beat an orca anyway? I thought of stingrays, but they're just part of the menu. Sea crocodiles have incredible biting power and a thick skin that no killer whale would bite through, but the jaws don't open wide enough to bite off anything important. Maybe you have some ideas. Write them in the comments and we'll be sure to read them. As I said before, orcas have many well-honed hunting techniques that they use depending on their prey, the landscape, I don't know, maybe depending on their mood too. Or they check their horoscope. One technique in particular struck me. Watch the hands. Or fins. 
Seals often get out of the water on the ice floes to take a break. Nothing threatens them there, which means they can safely chill while bobbing on the waves. The orca is too heavy to climb on the ice floe and eat a seal, but it can always call its bros. Several predators line up, accelerate, then break right in front of the ice floe, creating a wave that just washes the prey away. All the orcas have to do is catch it in the water. There's nothing difficult here, they do it all the time. Sometimes, however, the prey manages to climb back onto the ice, and then the huge wave attack is repeated. Again, and again, and again. No one's in a rush here, you know. Oh, yes. Oh, oh, oh. As you've probably figured out by now, orcas are intelligent, ruthless predators that… What's that? Oh, another one? Maybe it means something. Yes. In addition to their other qualities, orcas are known for their rather strange playfulness. They play like real psychos. Ah! Literally. No, seriously. Look at this. Instead of just eating a poor seal, orcas play with it like a ball. And again and again. Sometimes it's a kind of practice just to keep their killer skills up. Sometimes it's a demonstration for the younger generation. And sometimes the game remains just a game. Orcas kill because they're bored. Hey Steve, what should we do tonight? Let's throw other animals until they die. By the way, it's not just seals that suffer. Sometimes it could be stingrays, turtles, or even a penguin. God, it's a bird. What's more, not even land will save you. Because if an orca decides to eat someone, it will reach its goal. Seals that are about to make it ashore look like a challenge or the perfect prey to play with. And what else would you call this way of hunting? When an orca almost jumps ashore to grab its dinner running away. As if there weren't enough other prey in the sea for the sake of which it's not necessary to break the laws of nature and get on land. However, look at it. What laws? It wants a seal. Sometimes this desire can turn into a serious problem for orcas. You can find tons of videos online of these predators who got too carried away hunting, missed the tide, and, yep, that's right, they got trapped. I hear ya. What can I do for you, sweetie? I can literally hear the seals laughing in the distance. In such a situation, the orca has only one option for salvation, to get help from people and wait for the tide to return to the sea. Of course, no one will drag a huge animal weighing three to five tons into the water on their own. Well, in, in case there's no people around, well, natural selection and action. I can't say that the population of killer whales would diminish without human help, but several dozen of these marine predators certainly owe their lives to people. Maybe that's why they sometimes play so happily with us. Fortunately, not as much as they do with seals, at least not usually. It all looks pretty innocent, even funny, even cute. For example, this orca named Luna lost its family and is so used to people that it acts like a playful puppy. A multi-ton sea puppy. Looking at how orcas play with people, somehow you forget that they're cruel predators and they have no equal in the sea. And if you've seen Free Willy, you probably can't help but get the feeling that you're being shamelessly deceived. And it's true. Hollywood is the chief deceiver. Even those orcas that perform in aquariums aren't the sweet, good-natured creatures. The best and most horrifying example is Tilikum, a trained male involved in at least three human killings. The first was Kelty Byrne, who slipped and fell into a pool where Tilikum and two other orcas were. They tossed the girl between them with their jaws, submerged her in the water, and prevented her from surfacing. Kelty drowned. The second victim was a man who snuck into Tilikum's pool after the aquarium closed. But the third human attack was the worst. The orca dragged an experienced trainer, Don Brancho, into the water by the hair right at the beginning of the show. In front of an astonished audience, Tilikum played with the victim as if she were a toy. By the time the people could get to Don, she was already dead. What about the killer? Well, it soon went back to performing. <laughs> Don't let the money go to waste. The most recent tragedy occurred at SeaWorld Orlando Amusement Park. But orcas aren't only kept there. I think they're at every SeaWorld Aquarium. And they don't seem to forget their wild habits anywhere. They're predators that have no equal in the ocean. They're strong and intelligent. Why not hunt in the middle of a pool? So at SeaWorld San Diego, orcas don't just attack when they see something edible in front of them. They use bait to get the birds to come closer. And they do so quite deliberately, tossing pieces of… what is that, a fish? So pieces of fish closer, and then they wait. And it works. Orcas probably hunt birds just for the sake of hunting. They're playing. But you know, maybe from Tilikum's perspective, all the victims were part of the game too. I'd prefer to stay as far away from orcas as possible, especially if they're kept in captivity and already too used to humans. What if to them we're just skinny, hairy seals? We'll see you later.